Welcome back. Each Saturday, Pat McGuigan from CapitalBeatOK.com. He talks about the political hot topics that concern our state. And this morning, he is joining me live in the studio. And Pat, thank you for being here. Usually, we watch you with Alex or Amy, and but it's a pleasure to have you in studio. Thank you. Okay, so the session wrapped up yesterday, late afternoon. Right. Um, any unfinished business? What did they finish? Did the governor get in all of her agenda items? Uh, the governor largely got. Uh, the things that she wanted, yes. And in terms of unfinished uh, agenda items, and uh, her priority was not only the budget, but was also some of these consolidation proposals mm -hmm. and proposals for information technology. She largely got her agenda. Uh, she outlined, and so did the legislative leaders, some of the unfinished uh, uh, business items, including the bond issues, a cluster of bond issues that people wanted, mm -hmm. uh, but that maybe we don't have the money to pay for right now and that's part of what the uh, Indian uh, center yeah, ran into center. although in fairness you have to point out that there's been uh, many millions of dollars previously spent by the state mm -hmm. so uh, Senate President Pro Tem Bingham and others were saying you know maybe we ought to take a deep breath before we go forward with that and make sure that this next installment is the last one so they're asking for maybe some money from the tribes to help supplement the budget and finish mm -hmm. it so that's a quick sketch on that. Okay. Now, the big thing, I think, at the Capitol this year, the signal achievement, the most significant thing that happened was passage of pension reform. Um, that was a big, big hot button. <laughs> big topic. We've talked about it a lot here. Alex and the impact team have covered it. It's mm -hmm. uh, a really significant issue. And the state captured roughly 35, maybe even as much as 40% of the unfunded liability in the out years. Mm -hmm. That's very significant. The budget, you know. Uh, what can you the do? Yeah, the budget, <laughs> you, you have to pass a budget yeah. every year. We had less money as a state than mm -hmm. in previous years. There's a lot of criticism of the budget. I think it's a conservative budget, as you would have expected. It's not a right-sizing budget. That's an argument that's probably still coming mm -hmm. about are there some things the government's doing that they should stop doing. That didn't happen in this budget. In this budget, they focused on... Um, managing the resources they have mm -hmm. and uh, I'd give uh, I'd probably give them uh, a pretty good grade uh, probably B? a B plus B plus and wow. the, well That's the pensions <laughs> yeah we've talked gone back and forth on that with Alex about what grade I'd give I give them a B plus because of pension reform mm -hmm. and then I give them a B because they met the primary objectives mm -hmm. they got done on time there's a lot of discussion still to come and the, the House Democrats will be very much a part of that discussion because they were pretty effective this year in slowing down the GOP train, not in stopping it. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about this email that came out from the state Republican state treasurer, Ken Miller. He actually attacks the governor and legislative Republican legislative leaders. Now, and the email says this agreement is particularly disappointing because it is the first time in Oklahoma history that a budget has been crafted with complete Republican control, and yet it falls short. Was this expected, and is there a rift in the GOP? I don't know if there's a rift. What was unexpected was that Ken Miller would at least arguably be more conservative in assessing the budget than I am. Yeah. Um, I give him pretty good grade uh, with the caveat that it's not a right-sizing budget. But I, I think that the governor and the legislative leaders, and particularly uh, Mr. Sears and uh, Mr. Myers, Senator uh, uh, Myers and Representative Sears, the two budget guys, did a really good job of getting down into the particulars. I think what Treasurer Miller is driving at is there's unfinished business, mm -hmm. and he knows that very well uh, as a former budget chairman himself. Interestingly enough, that's kind of an interesting criticism that he gave because he gives them an A on policy but a C on the budget. Mm -hmm. So I guess you could say if you combine the grades, it's a B. Sometimes these <laughs> disagreements are more dramatic on the, the surface than they are underneath. Okay. Uh, but he said what he said. Um, and I think that sets an interesting stage for, shall we say, future discussions among the statewide elected leaders and the legislative leaders. Okay, very quickly, any uh, issues that will probably be tackled next session? Water. Water is going to be huge. In fact, this coming week here in Oklahoma City is the last of the uh, local hearings, uh, two dozen or so, scattered around the state. They started in the Panhandle and have moved across the state. And I think it's the 26th. Uh, that they'll have the hearing in Oklahoma City 
to outline the state comprehensive water plan, and that is going to be a huge issue next year. Okay, Pat McGuigan, thank you for being here with us this morning live in studio, and if you want some more information, you can visit Pat McGuigan's blog at capitalbeatok.com.